Let's try that again, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Scott Pellegrum. <laughs> Hey, Hello. thank you so much for coming out, man. Thank you for having me. This is awesome. This is incredible. Yeah, I was going to say that's one of the most unique and creative solos I've ever heard on Drumeo and I think in my life. <laughs> oh, stop so it. So cool. Some of, the, some, of the, <laughs> some of the coolest things. I never thought you can get those kind of sounds. So for you guys watching here, the lesson is titled Out of the Box Drumming. I don't think I need to explain what he's going to be talking about. I think it's pretty obvious with that solo. And um, if you guys don't know who Scott Pellegrum is, um, he is a clinician. He's an incredible drummer. He's a musician, a rhythmist. <laughs> Is what Rhythmist, you like to call yourself? Yeah. 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 Um, he's done many festivals, Modern Drum Fest, in, or the Montreal Drum Fest, sorry, Regina and Victoria Drum Fests. He's played at the, the Australian Ultimate Drummers Weekend, yep. um, Music Messe, the Armessa, the, the, just tons of stuff you've, you've, you've been working on. He also has a trio, the Scott Pellegrim Trio. That is that a quartet or a trio now? Well, we're, we're still the trio, but we market it as the Trio Plus One. Okay. Because um, I have a, a fantastic, it's right now, it's a John Sapli is on bass, and and he's also a DJ, oh, cool. so we do some live uh, drummer DJ, full band DJ stuff. We have Kevin Kozell on vocals and guitar, yeah. and then Reese Gall on vibraphones and the mallet cat. Oh, so man. that's our plus one, and he's a, a very special treat to have. A lot no of people doubt. enjoy his playing, and it's inspiring for me to be around those guys because they just keep pushing me to the next level. So Totally. You guys want to check that out? Um, it's the Scott... Telegram Trio, and you got an album coming out that's called Supernatural Bang. Yep, Hopefully, Supernatural Bang. <laughs> that'll be out in uh, June. So if you guys are watching this in the archive, it might already be out by now. Um, but it's got Pete Lockett on there too on that album. Yeah, I'm really, really fortunate. Um, um, I actually uh, have a couple drum kits on Pete Lockett's Drum Jam app with, oh, uh, nice. I think, Russ Miller's on there, yeah. KJ Saka, um, Johnny Rabb, a lot of my favorite drummers. Yeah. So I'm really honored to be a part of that. And, uh, you know, I asked Pete if he, he'd do some stuff for the record, and he said, yeah. Nice. And it, he just got the tracks back just last week, and they sound unbelievable. So cool. I'm really excited. I think uh, people will dig it. It's no definitely doubt. different. Yeah. It's, it's a bit weird. Well, but that's what that's 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 what you have to you try. Have, you have to you try. Uh, you guys can follow Scott if you want on Instagram at Scott Pellegram, also facebook.com slash Scott Pellegram as well. So definitely go and like him on there and follow him. And if you don't know him, I'm glad you're here to be able to watch him with that <laughs> sick solo in the beginning, too. Oh, thanks. Um, before we get started, I also want to thank your sponsors there, uh, DW, uh, Dream Symbols, Aquarian Heads, Fader Sticks. Yeah. Um, all thank thank you so much for helping bring Scott out to Dromeo for us today. Yeah, yeah, I'm very fortunate to work with phenomenal companies. You know, there's so many great companies, so many great drummers in the world, and we all have our choice and preference, and yep. uh, I'm just thank thankful to be a part of this, uh, all of these great companies. Very cool, man. Yeah, it's great. And like I said, your symbols, your whole setup sounds awesome. So, And if you guys like what we're doing here, obviously you guys know we do this every day on Drumeo Edge. And if you want, you can try it for free, drumeo.com slash trial. You get a free 30 days, give it a try because stuff like this happens all the time. Also, tomorrow, for all you Edge members watching, we are doing a Q&A just with the Edge members with Scott as well. So we'll try to get all your questions in today, but if not, We'll get them tomorrow. Uh, you can ask your questions below in the submit a box like you guys probably all know already. But enough talking from me. Let's get into out-of-box drumming. W what does that even mean? Well, you know, you mentioned the word rhythmist earlier. Yes. And to me, rhythmist is somebody, especially a drummer. You okay. know, I think drummers are musicians. We get kind of put in the back a lot that we're just cavemen and women back there bashing stuff. But the drums are really unique. They're very dynamic. We have a volume range from up here to underneath the drum kit. And, uh, but also, I mean, music is all around us. Rhythm is all around us from light, you know, the thunder coming in to a train going by to people closing doors and lights flickering. Um, I draw inspiration from that. Okay. And for me, I think it's really unique, whether you're on someone else's drum kit or you detune a kit or you're on pots and pans, how a lot of us started, um, you should be able to make music out of anything that you have, your mm -hmm. face, <laughs> you know, which is a lot of fun. I've given myself a lot of abuse over the years. Yeah. Um, so your hands, your fingers, there's a tone and rhythm everywhere. Yeah. And I feel that if you cultivate that, one, you're always going to be inspired. Two, you're not going to be uh, flustered because a seat is too high or a ride is too far away. You'll just make music because you love to make music. Mm -hmm. And it allows you to have the dynamic range of a saxophone or a vocalist or a, a pianist, you yeah. know? So I just try to find a way to cultivate because... The older I got and the more that I traveled and toured, I was away from my drum kit. So okay. I had to find ways to practice. Yeah, of course. And so then I started playing on my body and finding out like what are different sounds I can get and you know, setting up playing on pillows, which a lot of us do, um, but also just saying like, what can you do? Like throw something at me and let's see if we can make music out of it. Yeah. 
And that's something that I think is really inspiring for a lot of people because wherever you are, you can always practice. Yes. Yes, and I agree with that so much. And a lot of the stuff that you might practice or you might think about doing, putting it into a musical setting is the hard part, I think. And that's what you just did a great job of, of showcasing in Thank that you. solo there. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, pretty much everything I do when I'm doing clinics or a, a drum solo especially, I'm always improvising. Mm -hmm. There are going to be certain common uh, themes or ideas that have stuck with me over the years. Um, but I'm always improvising. I never really know what I'm going to play or say, and I just go for it. And it's kind of a, a mutual symbiotic relationship that the drums tell me a lot of what to play. Like, yeah. this drum kit is beautiful, and it's to me, this is a very large drum kit, because I'm usually like kick, snare, hats, and crash, ride. And when I sit down here, I hear bass lines, I hear melodies, you know, I hear mm -hmm. echoes. Um, so it's really inspiring to sit down. And I mean, I'll be honest, I'm not here to say I'm a perfect player by any means. Yeah. I'm far from that. But... Um, I love playing the drums and I'm very inspired to play. And for me, it's just a challenge to throw out, throw out an idea and then try to work with it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> you, know? you crash and sometimes burn. Sometimes you crash and burn, <laughs> you know, and I definitely have done that. But uh, over the years, I like to improvise because it challenges me on all the stuff that I've learned and studied and cultivated and just say, hey, why not? I'll mm -hmm. try it. You know, that's what I'm here for, to, to entertain and hopefully inspire Yes, one way or another, you know? Well, I'm, I'm already inspired just watching you warm up on that solo. You've given me already just like a handful of ideas that I want to go back to my kit and try. So explain some of this out-of-the-box drumming stuff that you're, you've you been practicing. Out-of-the-box, like basically for me with this whole rhythmic approach or the out-of-box drumming, um, there were times when I'd be in the practice room and I might be frustrated or jaded with an exercise I was working on. And mm -hmm. sometimes you get up and you walk away. Sometimes you, uh, like the movie Whiplash, right? You want to try to punch your hand <laughs> through the drum, which would hurt, yeah. right? Even Mess possible? yourself up. But um, sometimes I just say, what does this do? I'll put a cloth on and I'll throw an effect over here and I'll give myself a mallet and maybe a brush. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'll hit it. Cool. Nice dry tone. A lot of attitude. And then let's say here on this kit, we have some drums that are sustaining. So here we can play an open tone. We can play a closed tone or a muted tone. Try to work with stuff like that, or I'll throw two sticks in one hand. Um, I basically just try to mess myself up and kind of set myself up for failure, and I work my way out of the trenches. Okay. You know, um, sometimes I'll take a kit and completely detune it, and I'll just work on my chops, and I'll maybe fast speed chops, like Fist of Fury type stuff will sound really cool. And then you tune the drums up so maybe they're really jazzy, have a lot of tone and high pitched, and maybe you just want them to sing. Mm -hmm. So you work on being able to play chaos and then just play the relaxed, you know, kind of sunset beauty type sounds, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing that was challenging is that I feel that a lot of times we get stuck playing with drumsticks, but we don't think about our hands. Yes. Where we have. So you get the squeak from the air right? coming through the Yeah, top. the squeak. I mean, we can even blow air into it, but I probably, you know, I don't want to start making out with someone's drums. Um, they're not mine. <laughs> but then you can push and pull. You can scratch. And you say, well, how could that work? Maybe you want to do like a... So cool. So where, how did you think, pick up those concepts or those sounds that you got just from your hands? Like what made you do that? It's a, Well, like I said, I mean, a bit of it was from practicing, practice room. Uh, there used to be a point in time in my life when my buddies and I would be hanging out and I was notorious for always having a snare drum in my living room mm -hmm. 
or my bedroom, wherever I was, and we'd be hanging out, and someone would say, okay, here's a credit card. You know, here's a $5 bill. Here's some matches. Here's my keys. And they start throwing stuff at me. Yeah. And I was like a circus act trying to juggle and make, make things happen, okay. you know? Yeah. Um, and I thought, hey, that's kind of a cool idea. Like, why don't I do that with myself and just set stuff around the kit and start grabbing and playing and see what happens? Mm -hmm. And what I found is, one, when I'm playing with my hands versus brushes versus drumsticks versus mallets, you have all these different mediums, different rebounds and sensitivity and dynamics that really help develop my chops, mm. you know, and just the overall feel on the kit. And for a long time, I utilized it mainly for like drum solos, mm -hmm. especially at drum festivals where you're able to be very, very quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're at a rock club and you take a, a rock solo, I'm not gonna go. Yeah. You know, because it's right. going to be lost in translation. Yeah. But uh, then, over time, it started to develop that when I was in the recording studio, I worked with a great engineer and producer, Bill Chrysler, back at my hometown in Grand Haven. We would get ideas. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what, what if I played with my hands and a cross stick? Yeah. Or what if we just threw some cloths over the toms here for the, the, the first verse, and then the second verse we take it off to yeah. open up those sounds? And especially while making the Supernatural Bang record, there are so many sounds and nuances. I would be amazed if someone could actually pick what they were because I think we used like eight different drum kits, 10 different snares. We used a toy drum kit. We used calf skin heads. I mean, I played the air to anything you can imagine. Like example, another thing that's super, super cool that you don't think about, it's like, No kidding. Right? Yeah. So you have things like that that you can think about. So you're not just thinking about drumsticks, you know, rudiments up and down. You can think about angular things like... Uh, right? Okay, yeah. And I got that from playing with brushes because you have this and... So then I started to find that some of the stuff that works with my hands will work with brushes, that work with sticks, that work with mallets. And then all of a sudden this, uh, you have this huge vocabulary, a mm -hmm. wide range of dynamic, and what I like to say is colors, textures, and shades. Um, so then you can take something that you already know and ad lib maybe with a brush or a different angle or a different swipe, right? and you have a whole new sound, a whole wow. new idea. Yeah. So it's like very simple, basic concepts that a lot of us may have done by accident, um, but then when you start to hone in and harness that, now you just have endless possibilities. Yeah, no kidding. So when you're playing this stuff, how do you, uh, well, first off, before we get into that, show us some of the other cool little tricks that you've developed over the years, uh, stuff that you might have stumbled upon that you can share with us. That One cool thing sounds. that, and this is basic, and some people out there are gonna go, duh, you know? Okay. Of course. But like, for example, I, I always have like paper clips, um, and I carry around a lot of these rags, so I can clip them on the cymbals, clip them on the drums, I can throw it off the drum. Okay, yeah. So I kind of have that idea, like, because I'm inspired a lot by Steve Jordan and Questlove with their phenomenal drum sounds, and of course their grooves, yeah. but, um, for example, let's say I throw this over. I have a nice dry tone. Basic idea like that, okay? Okay. Another thing, a lot of us, if you're an open-handed player, you might, you'll cross stick this way. If you play cross-handed, what happens if you're, Some ideas, I remember doing that, I'm like, why didn't I think about that years ago? Or, um, yeah. 
Yeah. Just moving around because a lot of us think of this up and down. Then we play, you know, free open strokes or we might dead stroke or we cross stick, but we're not thinking about the full range of the kit. There's so many sounds that you can get. So I just started messing around like, what would happen if I did? Show us what you did there on the snare when you left the stick down, because that sounded so cool. This has been kind of a cool thing, and I've kind of been finding a way uh, to let the drumsticks and the drums speak on their own, for example. Um, and one thing that I think is cool, going back, before I display what you were just asking, if you just kind of let off that, the cross stick, you can get an open tone. You can get a flutter. Yeah. But one thing I started realizing that just sounded cool because a lot of people got into the hand clap sound, right? Yeah. Stuff like that. And then one day I just went, whoa. Started leading to other no things, yeah, right? Yeah. So it was really just a lot of experimentation and just kind of seeing how far down uh, the rabbit hole I can go with these sounds and a lot of the basic things that we we know how to do. Yeah. Um, so I have a lot of fun with that. For me, a big practice has always been the snare drum, and I'll have sticks, mallets, and brushes in my hands, and I'll try to play every groove I can think of that way. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was on a jazz gig or a singer-songwriter gig. Um, and then I try to say, well, what if I start combining a brush and a mallet, or a brush and a stick, or what happens if I do this, or what I like to call milk the cow. Right. So you're just running your hand right down the drumstick. Clicking up and hitting a lug into the rim, you have. Is that on the lug? That's right on. That's the, so yes, cool. it's using the tension bolt. You no know. No kidding. Yeah. So what I advise for a lot of people out there, just to have fun, get weird with the drums. Yeah. You know, there's no right or wrong. I mean, if you want to hold your drumstick this way and it works for you, cool. Go ahead. You never know what's gonna work for you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, just like uh, you see a lot of people doing this. Uh, this stuff, why aren't we doing it? Right? You yeah. just have all these ideas you can throw out. Some of them will work, and sometimes you'll fall flat on your face. Mm -hmm. um, but the key is, is to work on cultivating this in the practice room. Or when you're just hanging out, having fun, playing, shedding, just work on these ideas and find a way to utilize them so it's musical. Mm -hmm. Not just a lick, not just a trick or a pattern that you can play over and over, which all that is good. Mm -hmm. That's very essential to developing your playing and your chops and understanding what you do and how you're doing it. Yeah. But also you need that free form to have a language to communicate. Yeah. I think the drums are really poetic to me because they just sing to me. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's cool because you can just. You're gonna have everybody's attention. Mm -hmm. You can play at a light dynamic. Everyone in the audience is gonna jump up and go right back down. Yeah. I mean, you can scare people, you can get them excited, you can create tension, you can make people laugh. There's so many things you can do, so you wanna get 
to express the emotion of the drums and the human emotions, mm -hmm. experiment with the different sound sources that you have, and then find a way to bring them into your rudiments, into your licks and tricks, and into a musical setting. Mm -hmm. So how much is it, do you think, uh, uh, figuring out what sound it makes and the rhythmic feel behind each little trick you do before you can actually bring it into your playing? Well, first, you know, you can never go wrong using quarter notes or eighth notes. Yeah. You just can't, yeah. you know? So like, for example, start figuring out these different sounds you get, you find a way to combine them mm. or have them answer back. Just take basic rhythms and have them answer back. Yeah. Question and answer, right? Yeah. Like a lot of the clave stuff, tension release, mm -hmm. first chorus, right? Yeah. So you can use a lot of the basic musical terms that we've, you know, that you're learning, discovered, or have been through, and you start applying it with these sound sources. I guess a lot of drummers have these, you know, we, we think there's these rules behind, even like you were talking about with the cross stick, you know, doing both cross sticks on, on a, it's almost like a rule, it's like you don't do that. So yeah, it's kind of like just right. getting over that, get breaking through the, okay, well, I got to play it with my hand here. I got to play on the middle of the head. You know I mean? We even say on a lot of our lessons too, accuracy is important. And all exactly. That. Exactly. Yeah. It is, you know, but there's both sides. There's a yin and yang, you know, like you want to be as clean as possible. You want to be right on that metronome, mm -hmm. right? So you're not getting yelled at for rushing or dragging. Yeah. But then there's a whole other side, like the, all the Jay Dilla stuff that's coming out where instead of people going... to work within that quarter note or eighth note, but you can push it mm -hmm. and you can pull it. And it's the same thing. Like I used to draw dots on everything. And a lot of uh, the strokes I did were wrist strokes and finger control. Mm -hmm. But then I started working with buzzes, right? And crush and And then thinking, well, what does this sound like? Right? Yeah. So then you think about, well, there's a lot of... Right? Smacking on top of the cymbal. They have three cymbals going there, right? Yeah, no doubt. So then you have to go outside of the box yeah. and try all this other stuff. He goes, why not? Yeah. Why not, you know? Yeah, really, there, as long as it sounds good at the end, the end uh, result, and it's, you know, rhythmicist, like you said, you're, you're creating rhythms, you're not just creating time, you're not just keeping time, now you're creating something more melodic or more rhythmic. Right, and yeah. it's going back to it, like, I think drummers are very musical. Yeah. And we have this huge range of dynamics and we should use that. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna use this on every gig, you know, but, I mean, a lot of the times I'm doing... I love that, yeah. you know, I love that stuff. Or just playing... Right, but yeah. that's us learning how to be versatile, how to play jazz, how to play rock, fusion, hip hop, you know, all these other styles of music. But the end all goal, at least for me at the, the drummers I grew up listening to, they had a bit of everything. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what inspired me, you know, listening to someone like Tony Williams just being super funky and then being very avant-garde, mm -hmm. you know, splashes and colors. Yeah. And then being super sensitive and then this hurricane comes in, you know, and that really inspired me. And it's like, if you go through and try to figure out every single possible sound, you're going to have endless results. Mm -hmm. You're always going to be inspired. And then you go through all these different styles of music and all your different rudiments and all the different sound sources that we have. I mean, you're going to be entertained. Oh, I'll even like the first half of your solo when you were just doing hands. I just thought there were so many cool sounds you got just from your hands. Even that little uh, push on your snare that you, that you did there. That's... <laughs> You know? Right? Yeah. Like, that's so cool. Right there. Yeah. It's just fun stuff to do, and it definitely will freak some people out because people are used to, like, the. Which is awesome. Yeah. That stuff is always keeps me inspired. But if you pull that out and you're like, or whatever, right? Yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you ever have people that come up to you after? It's like, what were you doing there? Like, that yeah. don't get it, maybe? Or yeah. No. I mean, sometimes it just goes over people, and they're like, next. Yeah. You know, whatever. But it's like, that's the beauty of music and art is that it's it's subjective. Yeah. You know, and everyone has their opinion. Totally. You know, so it's like, I'm not going to please everybody. You're not going to please everybody. But nope. you're happy with who you are and what you do and you're inspired and you keep working at it, which means you have a dream and a goal and something to keep working towards. I love you it. Know? Love it. And I think that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me ask you quickly about what you have on your symbols here, too. You were uh, brought these in, and he had both of them on the Hyatts when, we, when he first came in, and he's moved them all <laughs> over the place. Uh, um, so first off, what are they, and what do they do when you move them around? This is, well, it's the Crop Circle Dream Symbols. Yeah. Has my name on it, right? Nice. And I'm really, I've been, like, I'll be 33 this uh, upcoming Friday. Nice. And I've been playing drums my whole life. I mean, literally my whole life. And when I was about nine or ten years old, I started listening to techno music, like mm -hmm. Detroit electronic music. And I really loved that four on the floor thing and the... That just, I love like white noise and chaos and raw sounds, you know, like all this stuff. It's just, yeah, it's nerve, right? It makes you cringe. Um, and what had happened, um, I was listening to a lot of like techno house stuff and Nine Inch Nails and mm -hmm. industrial music. Mm -hmm. um, and I always wanted to create those sounds, so I detuned my drums or put a trash can lid somewhere so I could get, you know. Right? Yeah. And I think those sounds work back and forth, like short stacks, they're jabby, punchy, a lot like our splash cymbals, but they're shorter. And uh, I broke my first like high-end cymbal and I was about 14 and I was devastated. I broke it right off because I was attacking mm -hmm. it. And um, I had an old China cymbal, so I put them on top and I call it the trash can and it was like my thing that I just loved to do. And it was definitely inspired by Dave Weckl, mm -hmm. you know, from the Back to Basics yeah. uh, video. Yeah. Um, well then, one day I was hanging out with a guy who had a Frisbee that looked like this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because uh, I used to love playing Frisbee threw it on the drum, and I was like, that's a perfect drum mute. Yeah. And then I started thinking one night, I'm like, what if I took the old school trash can lid idea and combined it with this, what would happen? And I hit the guys up over at Dream, and we started talking back and forth, and they sent me the first prototype, and I was like, this is awesome. And then I realized, like, you can get it here.
right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, again, uh, any drum is rebirthed into another instrument. And yeah. then thought, well, hey, you can move it. You can put it here. So cool. And then it started yeah. moving around. And then... I always love to have like tambourines and jingles and bells and stuff hanging all over my kit when I get a chance. Realize we should have a 10. I think we're working on a 13. But also you can add them all in. And it just opened up, and it's, again, one of those things where you throw on, like, earlier, I had it, I think, over here, and I think this was on this one. Just get ideas. Just try things out. And it's yeah. just sometimes it's that very small change of your, your um, perception of who you are and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You open up just the door a little bit and things can just open up right away. Just like I remember seeing um, one of my favorite drummers, Johnny Rabb, and another drummer, Adam Deitch, was doing this. You know, stuff like that. And I'm, I'm like, blown away with whoa. I'm blown away <laughs> with how different that sounds. How many different sounds you can get from that? I mean, nowadays, a lot of drummers are doing like the hybrid stuff too, where they're getting electric pads yeah, and stuff, and they yeah. can get those sounds, but you can get them a lot with just the acoustic, throwing a cymbal, like a splash like that on your snare. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Um, time is running low. No. I know. I want to be here. I want to I wanna live here. This place <laughs> is so amazing. Everyone's so awesome. Like, I can't thank everyone enough here at Drumio oh, thank for you so much, man. Uh, inviting me out, hanging out, and I'm learning a lot, and I'm really inspired, and you know, I don't want to go home, but when <laughs> I do, I'm going to be so jacked up about drumming and, and education and everything that uh, you guys have done a lot to inspire me, so I thank oh, you, thank for, you man. Yeah. for that, and I don't want to go. Well, you don't have to go yet. Um, okay. I want you to do another solo, if that's cool. I'll fact, try. Maybe I'll, I'll see what I can. Um, but... Uh, before you go, hopefully, you guys, I mean, we're going to get to questions too, but uh, this is just, like I said, so inspiring, and I hope that it gave you guys a ton of ideas of what you can do, and the whole idea, basically, of what it sounds like is just go and experiment. You know? Yeah, just have fun. You I mean, there really, yeah. there's obviously rules or guidelines that you need. It should, you should have a teacher. You should have a mentor. You should research and dig as deep as you can mm -hmm. um, because there's a lot of great information that will help get you on the right path so you're not hurting yourself. You're not tense. You're not stressed. You are able and ready to play a gig or fill in or know what to do to audition, but you also just need to have fun. Mm -hmm. You know, this this isn't just a, an Olympic sport. You know, like mm -hmm. you need to have fun. You need to express and figure out who you are. Um, the way I play is a glimpse on kind of how I am. I'm quirky and weird and goofy, mm -hmm. and uh, I can be super rowdy and I can be very very quiet. You know. Love it. Yeah. And I think uh, everyone out there, like, I'm excited. Uh, hopefully that uh, one thing inspired someone out there. And I can't wait to see the video, like, tomorrow or a month from now or a year from now and, and to see what it did and to see what other do. Because I was listening to TED Talks. I'm really into listening to that stuff. And I was really inspired because I was on my way to the airport. And this is just a quick thing. 
He said, subconsciously, a lot of us think that we have our own ideas. Mm -hmm. Man, I have this awesome idea, da 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 da. The thing is, your idea stem from someone else's idea that stem from someone else's mm -hmm. idea. So I may be inspired by this drummer and this drummer, but that drummer was inspired by someone else mm -hmm. and someone else. So really, the moment it's in your hands, it's your thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's your idea I love that. and it's how you are, and we're all gonna sound different. I and mean, if you sat down and played this stuff and everyone else, it's all gonna sound different. Yeah. It's not better or worse, but it's gonna be different because that's the beauty of being unique and being an individual and your own person. And uh, there are so many great ideas out there, so take them, steal them. Anything I played is yours. You can have it. Done. Like, that's yours. Yeah. You know? And if you ever have questions, anyone out there, just hit me up. You know, find me on Facebook or Instagram and hit me up with a question, and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Very cool, man. Yeah. Very cool. Well, let's uh, get you to play us a, uh, just a little solo here, and then we'll get you to play us a massive solo out. But while he's playing here, guys, if you have questions, and I'm sure there's already tons in here already, um, we'll get to some after this little solo here. And uh, if you guys miss your question and you're an Edge member, don't worry. Tomorrow we're going to have a full hour Q&A just with Scott. Um, so I'll try to get through as many as I can in the short time we have here, but if not, come check us out tomorrow. And if you guys aren't an Edge member and want to come and hang out at the Q&A um, or do this every day, like I said, what we do here at Drumio Edge, you can sign up for a free 30-day trial at drumio.com slash trial. All right, Scott, you're going to uh, amaze us with some completely different out-of-the-box ideas? We're going to see what happens here, you know? So this is going to be part, I have no idea what's going to happen here. Drums on cymbals and yeah.
There you go. Right? That was that was awesome. <laughs> Very groove. I like yeah, that one. yeah. Yeah. The symbols on there just add so much. Okay, let's get some questions here, and then we'll get you to do us an epic outro solo. All right. All right. First one actually is uh, there's two that have asked us or asked similar questions. Nicola and uh, Levi, the drummer, um, basically. Levi was saying, hey, Scott, I've always admired your creativity behind the drum set. Where do you get your inspiration from? And along the same question, Nicola says, where do you find your creativity? So very similar. Very similar, very similar. I think it, well, one, I'm inspired by everybody. Like We were talking about this last night coming back from the airport. Like There are so many incredible drummers out yeah. there. It's just amazing. There's mm -hmm. no greatest drummer in the world or best drummer or fastest because the boundaries are limitless and they're always being pushed. I was really lucky in my early development when I was about 14 to 17. Um, I studied with a drummer by the name of Dorico Watson. And to me, he was just so unique and so incredible, a very friendly and positive person, pushed you to the limits as a student, but in a very loving way. And whenever he played, he was smiling, mm -hmm. he was yelling. And I remember every time I'd show up to a lesson, he would be practicing something new. Yeah. And I knew that if I wasn't prepared, you know, I would let him down. Mm -hmm. And he was someone I looked up to. Um, so he is a huge source of inspiration. Victor Wooten, who Dorico plays for, Victor Wooten is, to me, just an amazing bassist. Um, and I've seen him detune his strings and scratching and pulling and plucking. And I was blown away. Um, I really like Chick Corea. Yeah. I've seen him play with mallets on the back of the piano. Um, I'm really inspired by Pete Lockett. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, but I'm also, I'm really inspired by people like Dr. Oliver Sacks who write about neurology and how music affects the brain and can help with certain diseases within the body. You know, yeah. like I'm really inspired by science. I'm really inspired um, by art. Okay. I'm very inspired um, by cooking, like chefs. Oh, cool. And uh, shows with a host like Anthony Bourdain, because I think the cooking world or the chef world, let's say cuisine, mm -hmm. is very similar to the drumming community. Okay. You know, like do you, you have people that are cooking from New Orleans or people cooking from Italy or cooking from France, but a great chef is a great chef. Yes. Someone who is in love with what they do will be in love with what someone else does. Mm -hmm. And when you get all those minds together, mm -hmm. what's gonna happen? Very cool analogy. You know? Yeah. So to me, uh, I'm inspired by the drumming community, yeah. just in general, but I'm also very inspired by life itself because I just think it's such an amazing thing. Very cool. You never know. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, great question here from Polish drummer forever. It says, uh, uh, Scott, Love this topic, and I have a question. I was just wondering what solos you would suggest for my audition to a college of music, Berkeley, for example. I have an idea of a solo, um, but what would your suggestion be if you're kind of trying to get into something like that? You know, I can't think. Well, one, I know um, there's a great young drummer out there, J.P. Bouvet, mm -hmm. who um, a lot of people know about, and I believe he's been posting stuff about like online or auditions to Berkeley. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of info out there, but you want to make sure that you're confident, you're relaxed, and showing musicality, mm -hmm. dynamics, groove, versatility, mm -hmm. great Latin grooves, great funk grooves, you know. I can't think of any particular written solo. Sure. But uh, what I would say is find some of your favorite drummers mm -hmm. and find some of the things that they do best and harness that and present it. Cool. Gosh777 uh, has a question. It says, hey, Scott, my question is when you perform at a live show, how do you know what sound you want to use at a live concert, and how do you know if that sound is going to sound good with the music itself? When I used to, you know, around the age of 16, I did a lot of freelance work, so I was playing in clubs and bars and doing top 40 stuff or backing up an artist for a set, so... Um, so after, you know, winning some gigs and losing some gigs, I started to really dig deep about what is this music about, what is the style, what are the sounds. Um, and for me, instead of thinking like, oh man, I need like four snare drums and I need this and that, I try to think of how can I make this one snare drum sound like four or five other snare drums. Mm -hmm. um, so by doing my research and being prepared for the gig, I would be ready to know what sounds to use. With my trio, we have all these songs that we arrange, but we'll be playing, and I'll look with my guitarist, Kevin, 
And I'll give them that wink or a spastic look, and that means we're going into double time jazz, or we're going to play a Latin groove right now. Okay. Same song, boom, yeah. we'll flip it around. And when I play something different too, that'll inspire the rest of the group. So I have a lot more lead way because I run my own trio and my own quartet to do a lot of weird stuff and explore a lot of the stuff that we do here. That's what we do in the trio. A mm -hmm. lot of the songs, songs are arranged in colors and textures and soundscapes. Yeah. You know, so... If you're going to be doing a gig or auditioning, um, a great person to look up would be Brian Fraser Moore. Okay. He's a fantastic drummer, a wonderful human being, and he is, you know, the best of the best when it comes to the mega tour drummers. And he'll tell you to do your research mm -hmm. and to learn those sounds. And I believe he even does consultations. So, oh, wow. You know, that would be a huge opportunity to, to talk to someone like that. Cool. Well, thank you. Hopefully that answers your question there, Gosh. Um, okay. Paul Andre Riel says, great lesson, Scott. It seems like you would have a hard time to play the same thing twice if there's so many variations in your sound. How difficult is it to write a part, uh, partition with that style? Again, it kind of goes back. Like, if I'm playing a gig for someone else, I'm there to do a job mm -hmm. and to support the music and that artist. So I have no problem... I love that, you know, I love groove music, I love seeing people dance, and I love knowing that a song is featured. Yeah. Because the idea is that we all work together, so there is, we're all in the same vehicle, yeah. expressing the same idea. Um, but it is, for me, like, I've, I've wandered away a bit from freelance stuff, because I would have to learn 30 or 40 songs sometimes in a day, mm -hmm. you know, to do two hits, and then I'm done. And I love that because it's inspiring. You do a lot of work, and it tests your ability and your discipline. But it is difficult for me to play something the same way because every time I play out, uh, especially with my trio, I am always using a different kit. Yeah. Always. Different sticks. I use five or six different models of Vader sticks. No kidding. Always. Always no changing kidding. it up. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so it is. It's a discipline, but I think it's important to have both sides. Cool. I think it's important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, J uh, James DeDrama asks, where can I get some of those circle symbols? Check them out, dreamsymbols.com. Um, I think Virtual Symbols has them. Um, quite a few stores have them around. Um, and if you can't find them, then hit me up on one of the various forms of social media, and I'll try to point you in the right direction because they're a lot of fun. And uh, they've been on tour with a lot of people who may not endorse Dream Symbols, but I see them. But they use them. And it's very inspiring, cool. and it makes That's me happy cool. that other drummers are happy. So Yeah, you feel free to leave them here before you leave. Yeah, you know, you might. <laughs> I don't know if I'll get them back home, you know. So yeah, exactly. I'd love for you guys to have some here. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, last, we'll leave it at this for the last question. It's a good one, and I apologize if your, was, your question wasn't answered. Uh, just running out of time here, but uh, this one is from Jerome Lucas. says, you said that a good drummer has to pick a little bit of every different genre to make it his own style. Uh, I really agree with that, but how do you work on it? Do you have to master every style, or do you get the basic ideas and move on from that? It's a really good question. You know, everyone learns differently. Everyone thinks differently. You know, some people are very much kind of like monkey see, monkey do. Yep. You know, you hear it or see it, you can play it. Some people need to transcribe or read music for them to play it perfectly. And I think you want to be able to have all of those parts. But... If you're saying, all right, I'm really good at funk and gospel music, but my jazz is not happening and my country music is not happening, then you make a list of what you need to work on. What are the great drummers out there? What are the great bands? Mm -hmm. And learn that music. Just write it down and make a goal. Like, for me, for a long time, I, I'd have it listed out like, I am not good at gospel music, <laughs> you know? I haven't done a country gig, and my jazz fusion needs a ton of work. Yeah. So I would make that list, find those drummers, and I would get that music and listen to it all the time. And I would study it, you know, a portion out of maybe Monday is country music, Tuesday is like gospel chops type thing, and then I'll give myself a break and say, okay, rudiments. Um, but basically what I'm saying is find a little routine on how you work and, and how it's going to work within your life and just mm -hmm. take that time and be patient, you know? 
When I practice, I do something called the drool method, meaning it's like when you just wake up, you're ready to fall asleep, and there's like stuff, you know, (laughs) you're tired and you're barely out of it, and I hit and slowly work on combinations, or if I'm working on a groove, a independence for Latin or something, it is at like lower than 50 BPMs. Mm, yeah. Maybe not even with a metronome. Just super slow, get Just the sequence. Just to break it down, because yeah. practice should hurt a bit. Mm-hmm. Practice means you're working. Mm-hmm. You're lifting your weights, right? Yeah. You're, you're running your laps. When you're playing, when you're shedding, that's when it's fun. That's when you're playing the stuff you're really comfortable with. So whatever it is, take your time and be patient, because I know you'll get it. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Scott. Thank you. I appreciate so you coming much. Out. Yeah, man, yeah. this is awesome. This, this is, is a, a lot of fun. A treat for us. I mean, we don't like I said, like super creative stuff. I like guess we haven't done a lesson on out of the box drumming in this vein, so I think it was really cool. Uh, guys, again, check them out on uh, social media: Instagram at Scott Pellegrim and Facebook.com slash Scott Pellegrim. And you're gonna play us out now, correct? Yeah, I'm gonna try. Awesome. I'm gonna see if I can give a little something different. Well, have fun. Take your time. There's no rush. I will see you guys all later for all you Edge members. I'll see you tomorrow at 4 for a Q&A with Scott. You're also filming a course. Edge yeah, ex- for, yeah, tomorrow, for, for right? For Drum Edge exclusive. So it's going to be really cool. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you all for coming out. Take it away, Scott.